speech, and to open the second half of the debate, the first speaker, Cambridge A, please. system of oppression by awakening people to the continuing condition of women and why this rebalances gender divides by en enabling women first of all to seek a uh, balance in the home and seek education and providing political capital for change. Firstly, uh, four points for rebuttal. Firstly, to uh, the closing part in terms of their point of information that, you know, women won't be employed under this system or, you know, we should just pay equally. First response, yeah, we have thought of just paying women equally. The point is that people don't do it under the status quo, right? The fact that 90% of the world's land is held by men, the fact that women earn less for doing the same job, means that we can't do that. The second response we have is that that is more complex, right? That men and women are often socialised differently through the toys they are given, through the role models that they have. We think that this helps to break that down by pointing that out as injustice. No thanks. Secondly, they tell us this is going to lead to increased resentment against women. Firstly, that is completely non-comparative. Even if some women are resented, they now have an awful lot more money for doing exactly the same job, right? They are in an awful lot better position. But the second thing is, people tend not to resent people who are the, who are the recipient of reparations, right? They do resent welfare uh, recipients as scroungers of, it, of people who are getting charity, but they don't resent, resent people who are seen as the victims of historic injustice. We think, that is, uh, we think that's different, no thanks. Thirdly, they tell us, you know, these are irrational, it's just the fault of irrational sexists, uh, and that's all fine, we just need to deal with that. No thanks. Firstly, there are state structures, as opening government told us. But secondly, the reason why those irrational sexists arise is through education and the way in which they are socialised, right? By the fact that they are constantly told that men do sport and women do cookery, right? We think in that circumstance, the state is directly responsible for that, and it's often latent and hidden in people's ideas. No thanks. Finally, they tell us, well, you know, not all people are harmed and we should just use the courts. First of all, even if a woman is able to get to the same position of a man, the reality is that she has to work a hell of a lot harder to overcome institutional sexism than a man does, right? So the state not doing anything in either way, in treating each individual as notionally equal, in fact serves to harm women by making them work harder than a man would have to do to get to the same position. In that circumstance, every single woman is harmed. No. And moreover, we also think that courts are completely insufficient to deal with the rhetoric, you know, that you abandoned your child by going out to work, we think it's only by reparations that you're able to do that by giving people financial benefit and sending a strong message that that is the wrong thing to believe. So, firstly, no. Why do we think that this breaks latent oppression? Because one of the biggest problems with continuing sexism is there is a belief that we have moved on and that, that, um, that people are not aware of the oppression that women have historically faced and continue to face. There is a systemic mystification of the experience of the oppressed, right? It's the idea that wearing makeup, that having plastic surgery is something that you do for you, when in fact it is socially conditioned that you should do that in order to make yourself beautiful. It's the fact that women are told to play with Barbies and Easy Bake ovens because those are the roles that they are going to have to fit into. Most people see that as natural when in fact it is not. The point of this, uh, the point of this message is it shows that you, that the state now has done wrong, right? That those, that those very things and those very actions were things that were not things that should have happened, right? We think reparations have a strong importance in breaking, first of all, the attitudes of men out of those, but also the attitudes of women to enlighten them to the oppression they continually face. Because an awful lot of women are, are still unaware of the extent of that oppression. No thanks. Moreover, what this does is provide intense political capital to change those structures, right? So that the state doesn't have to continually pay out, met, pay out reparations in order to bridge that pay gap, right? So it creates the political capital in order to break down those oppressive structures at the same time as you enlighten them to that. Uh, no, no, I will take a few some. Uh, Captain, yeah, that would be. Um, like they oppress women, 
wow, you nearly got me there. Like, <laughs> uh, and, and don't treat that as some kind of concession, right? Uh, the, point, the, the point is, prostitution and dowries are things that do apply to women and are injustices. What this does is it awakens people to the fact of that injustice and starts to enable people to break free of those. That's the second part of our extension. Because the first thing we know is that when many women do engage in necessary and economically productive work that is not remunerated, right? Like the fact that they are constantly the ones who are caregivers, like they are constantly the ones who are homemakers, which are necessary for the continuation of society, but isn't well remunerated, right? What this does is it makes women economically dependent on men, right? It makes them dependent on the productivity of their husband or their father in a huge number of instances. Obviously not all, but in a great many. The point is that this, first of all, frees up women to be able to move out of that state if they don't want to do that, right? Because they're no longer dependent on those individuals. But second of all, it rebalances the relationship, right? Because it, mean, it, it enables that individual to say, I am contributing to this, right? And look, I am getting remunerated for that. What's more, it also enables people, uh, it also enables them to break free of another structure of oppression, which is lack of education that women constantly face, right? Because one of the biggest problems we see across the developing world is that women are not economically empowered to be able to go off and seek education and instead have to either rest on their family or rest on uh, staying at home and produ uh, staying at home and being homemakers, right? What this allows people to do is it allows people to go out and to seek education because they have the funds with which to be able to, uh, uh, to, to, be able to uh, support themselves. That has several consequences. First of all, you simply get more educated women and it rebalances that divide. Secondly, it creates a culture in which it is socially acceptable and more socially acceptable for women to seek education. We think that's beneficial in terms of encouraging more and more women to do that. Thirdly, it creates more role models wherein women can see that people have gone to university and enables them to see that that's a path that they can follow. Fourthly, it encourages universities and educational institutions to appeal to women in order to be able to get them to come because they now have the economic empowerment to be able to do this. Finally, what this does is enables women to have political power in, all, in order to be able to move campaigns. Because what we see with current social movements for uh, minority issues or for issues of oppression like the black movement, like the gay movement, is they are often, first of all, fragmented with the notion that I could succeed, why couldn't you? But second of all, they have a strong lack of funds. This breaks down both of them. First of all, by allowing women to be able to contribute to political campaigns in order to do things like breaking the glass ceiling, in order to have more campaign time. But but moreover, it breaks down that rhetoric of I could succeed, why couldn't you? Because it shows that even if you could, it was state systems of oppression that disenabled you from getting that, rather than simply being your lack of ability, as opening opposition would have you believe. This is a system that not only redresses past injustice, but is going to lead to the continuing redressing of injustice, and it's going to empower women into the future. I'm very happy to propose it.